Chess for me is not a game, but an art. Yes, and I take upon myself all those responsibilities which an art imposes on its adherents. Alexander Malochin Hello chess lovers, Sonnen here and in this video I want to share with you a famous historical game played between Alexander Alochin and Aaron Nimtsovich. The game was played in 1930 in Italian city Sanremo. At the time Alochin was the reigning world chess champion and he opened up with e4. Nimtsovich answered with e6, d4, d5. French defense is on the board, knight c3, bishop b4. We see the win our variation e5, c5, and bishop d2. Alochin is choosing the Bogolubov variation. By unpinning the knight, white now wants to play knight b5, offer the exchange of dark squared bishops, and relying on the weaknesses of the dark squares, penetrate opponent's camp. Usually in here, black is capturing on d4, and then after knight b5 is moving back the bishop on e7, thus still having control over essential d6 square, but in this case, we have knight e7, which is also a popular continuation. Knight b5, bishop takes d2, check, queen takes d2, black castled king side c3. First white is strengthening his center, and then we'll put the knight on this tempting square. b6, uh, with this move, black wants to play bishop a6 and get rid of this bad French bishop. But time will show that this is not really a good idea. Uh, in his comments, Alochin suggests knight f5, at the same time covering the d6 square, but according to Stockfish, f6 is stronger. But instead, in the game we see b6. Here comes f4, bishop a6, knight f3, queen d7, attacking white knight, and a4. With his pawn push, white will now try to cement black's queen side, and gain a space advantage. Knight bc6, already black can go for knight a5 followed by knight b3, that's why white played b4, a move which Tarash would call highly original. c takes b4, c takes b4, bishop b7. Well, if bishop takes b5, if you proceed with your idea of trading off this light squared bishop, then simply a takes b5 and having control over some essential squares, while is managing to totally paralyze black's position. Uh, in the game we see bishop b7, and there comes knight d6, f5. Here is what Alochin writes about this move, a decisive strategic error in an already compromised situation. Nimtsovich was obviously afraid of attack against his king, yet that was the one thing he did not have to worry about in the present game. The only chance of obtaining some more space was a5. And yes, Stockfish also suggests this move, but instead we see f5, and now using his chance, it's Alochin who is going for this a5 move. Now, if b takes a5, then b5, and at any moment, white can win this pawn, no problem at all. Uh, to a5, black answered with knight c8. Nimtsovich is just making mistakes one after another. At least it was better to play a6, but even so, still, white is maintaining advantage. Uh, in the game, uh, we see knight c8, which is even worse. There comes knight takes b7. Queen takes b7 and a6. Allowing the a pawn go this far was a huge mistake by Nimtsovich. First of all, he should have played a5, and then at least a6, but... None of those moves were made. Queen f7. Well, if queen e7 attacking this pawn, then simply bishop b5. And if knight takes b4, then white can castle king's side, and then this knight has no safe retreating square. That's why instead of going for that suspicious line, we have queen f7, and there comes bishop b5. As Alochin says, from now on black may play what he likes. He will be unable to protect adequately the squares c6 and c7. Knight 8 goes to e7. Uh, well, if a knight 6 e7, then this time knight g6 can be very unpleasant. If queen g6, then h4, h5 is coming. In the game we see knight 8 e7. And finally Alochin castled king's side. Finally he's connecting his rooks. 
and now by relying on the weakness of the C file he will put a gigantic pressure. H6 covering the G5 square and here is what Alochin writes. Although knight G5 was not yet a threat, it could become one in the near future. Besides the immediate rook F C8 would not change the situation a bit. Black loses not because of lack of time, but because of lack of space. Here comes rook f c1, rook f c8, rook c2. White will now double up his rooks. Queen goes back on e8. This time black is tapping into a nasty pin. But if you offer the exchange of rooks, then again this won't help you. After the exchange of rooks, this time white queen can penetrate the 7 franc. Uh, in the game we see queen e8, and there comes rook a c1, rook a b8, queen e3, rook c7, rook c3, white now wants to free the c1 square for the queen, queen d7, rook c2, king f8, black king is hurrying to support the army, but there is no way out, it's too late, there comes queen c1, and here we have a powerful weapon, which is known as Alochin's gun. We see a massive formation where two rooks are stacked one behind another, and the queen at the rear. This will now lead to a substantial material loss for the opponent, as it places considerable pressure on the target of the gun. There we have it. This gigantic pressure will now destroy Black's position. But in my humble opinion, this is more like a cannon than a gun, you know, and it's ready to shoot. Rook b8 was played in the game because already the threat was bishop takes c6 and bishop a4. White is now threatening b5. That's why Black himself played b5, gave up this pawn in order to gain a precious time and bring the king on d8, but at this point Alochin played h4, a quiet move and forced a resignation. The thing is that soon black is going to find himself in Tsuk Tsavang. For example, if g6, then white can make some waiting moves. If h5, then again let's move back the king on g1, after which black is in Tsuk Tsavang. If black moves away his rook, then the knight on c6 will drop, and if queen e8 or king e8, then in both cases the rook on c7 can find itself unprotected, after which white can play b5. And then yeah, if you move away your knight, then rook takes c7 can follow. That's why after h4 Nimtsovich resigned. What a brilliant positional masterpiece by Alochin IV. Nimtsovich made several strategic mistakes and that cost him a whole game. Hope that you enjoyed this game, feel free to share with your friends as well, and in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for black. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care!